So Wayfair is an online retailer of home goods. So selling everything from furniture to throw pillows to anything you can think of that would actually go inside of your home. Our tagline is actually a zillion things home. So it's everything. <laughs> Um, I've been at the company for six years working with various teams from customer service to our EDI and inventory team um, and currently manage a group of business data analysts for specifically focusing on data analysis within our operations teams. So we look at a bunch of different areas within operations, but specifically focusing a lot on transportation. Uh, our supplier operations from which we source all of the products and our warehouse operations. I think it's mostly just the path that Wayfair has come from. Um, it is something where we're growing incredibly quickly and we've also changed a lot within the past five years or so. Um, we started off just doing a very simple model well, simple to us at this point, where it was just drop shipping product from a supplier to a customer, and we relied upon carriers to have their networks set up to do whatever we needed them to do. And it generally worked. Uh, but as we grew, we started seeing more opportunities for us to figure out ways to consolidate some of that volume and make further steps. So we opened two warehouses. Uh, and those have served as distribution points for us, as well as also focusing on our big parcel network. So big parcel products being all of the furniture side of things that we sell, sofas, things that are too big to just use small parcel solutions like FedEx and UPS. Um, in terms of those products, we then started saying, we're gonna pool some of the product from a set of suppliers that were in a local area so that we have all of that together and then we can start consolidating what we ship out of that area. And as soon as we did that, we kind of saw this pathway of having more volume and having a little bit more ability to think creatively and see what we could do. Um, and even that, I think when we initially did it, we said, okay, we're gonna have some of these consolidated paths and it seemed like a great solution. But then we kept growing so quickly that we immediately saw there might be more opportunity to, instead of doing consolidated freight runs with an LTL carrier, where we had just a small amount of freight, we could actually have a full truck that's running across the country. But in order to do that, it might have to make stops and have more complicated routes. And it just developed to something where it started getting beyond what we could do with Excel and brain power and putting together a model. It was something that was a huge project and a lot of moving pieces and something that we knew was going to be an ongoing thing of you wouldn't be able to do it once and be done because in another couple of months we'd be vastly larger than we were at that point. So we'd have that to keep up with. I think we did first sit down and say, okay, we have one project right off the bat we know that we wanna do. And that was that concept of creating those multi-stop truckload routes that would go from the pooling facilities from all of the suppliers to like a more local delivery facility that's close to all of the customers. So we had a network of those different types of moves we wanted to consider and it came from a small number of points, but it went to a large number of points. And we sat down and we said, all right, we wanna be able to design multi-stop routes that can pick up things from various of those pool points and make deliveries to other delivery facilities in the interim space between them or keep going further. We just wanted something that could design the routes, tell us what routes it used, and we'd be able to take it and test it against our volume and our variability and figure out if it was a good solution. Um, so that was our initial ask. And we kind of went out and saw what was available. And then we layered on top of it some of our specific needs and requests. Obviously when you're shipping things like sofas and furniture, um, it 
is slightly different than just shipping like a pallet full of freight across the country. And damage becomes a lot larger of a concern in our world than it might in a different world. So for us, it was really important to look at how those routes were being designed. And our request was, we want to be able to go from these pool points to these delivery facilities, make pickups and drop offs all over the country, have a route designed where nothing has to be unloaded and reloaded at any point, even though you're making little deliveries along the way and such. So in a way, it was just the order in which you loaded the freight, but there had to be some sort of algorithm behind it that was actually testing that out and saying, does that work? And we actually went to a lot of different parties to ask, like, that's one of our requests. And it seemed difficult for a lot of them, but it was one of the ones that Llamasoft actually came through and said, we can do. And not a problem. We'll figure it out. It's in there. It's easy. It's something that we can apply simply now at this point. So that was definitely a ask on our side. <laughs> um, and then outside of that, it was sort of just brainstorming what other projects and other use cases might come up. We knew we had the two warehouses. We knew it was always going to be a question of if we add a third warehouse, do we, where do we add it? Do we need it? What's kind of the idea behind that? Um, we have European operations. We knew that there might be some potential projects in the future for that as well. So we looked at different solutions to see what their structure was and what they might be able to offer us in the future. At this point, we've had Supply Chain Guru for a little over a year. Um, and throughout that, we've used just the transportation optimization and the network optimization pieces. Um, so those are the two different modules within <laughs> which we work. Uh, in terms of the transportation optimization, we have done some of that looking at potential routes that I described, so looking at how you can design multi-stop routes across the country. Um, and a lot of it has been to actually design the routes, which then sort of our transportation team goes through and sort of tests and see if they can get a carrier to actually do it for us. Uh, but it's also been looking at if we let those routes be designed, like what volume points do we get different amounts of or percentages of our volume on those truckload routes. Um, so it's something where we can look at the model and say, if we want to put in four times our current volume, which might only be two and a half years from now, but if we want to put all of that in there, then what does that say? Does that say at that point we do actually have enough volume to do everything on trucks? Or is that going to show us that we really still are always going to have this small area outside that's going to be remote and not really included in that routing process. Um, tends to be the latter just because of the general population density in the US. I don't think we're ever going to have enough volume that we're going to send routed trucks to North Dakota. But <laughs> it does definitely kind of open up those options. So I think in terms of our benefits. We've had a couple of those routes that were suggested that we were able to take and run with and sort of say, OK, this will work. And maybe we can add it to our existing portfolio. And it'll get us a little savings and also give us something that's relatively low on damage, we think, and sort of more reliable than just letting a third party carrier do our shipping um, in terms of reliable in terms of we know where it is and when it's going to be there, and it's more scheduled. Um, but then there's also the benefit of just sort of strategy design, looking long term. It has helped us a lot in terms of saying, OK, what does our roadmap look like in two and three years? Is it something where we are going to have enough volume to do the things that we want to do, or are those going to be longer term points? Yeah, definitely starting 
couple years ago, our main goal in terms of setting up that type of a network was, hey, we are going to get some cost savings. We didn't, I mean, we had some ideas on what it might do to other things, but really cost savings was the driver. Um, versus now, really our main concern in terms of being the destination for buying home goods on the internet is that we're going to have the best customer experience. So as that becomes more of a focus, it's looking at a trade-off. We're obviously not gonna give it all away in terms of cost. We still wanna keep the savings that we've gotten or sort of at least moderately keep the savings. But there's a trade-off with how much volume we can route on those truckload types of shipments and what different solutions we can do because we do wanna reduce damage um, it's not a good customer experience, and it's actually a cost as well, because if product gets damaged, it's not free to replace it. We have to kind of figure out and work with that piece. Um, so there's cost and customer experience trade-off there, and then the transit time in terms of how you get freight across the country. If you are relying upon third-party freight carriers, they're not slow, <laughs> they're fast because they have a lot of volume, but it is something where you don't know exactly what to expect. So you might think it's gonna be five days, but you're not really sure, and so you have a little bit more volatility there, and it's harder to give the customer the exact expectation when they're ordering of when it's gonna arrive. Um, the more control and the more kind of, yeah, control you have going through that network the better idea you have of when things are gonna arrive and the better ability you have to try to force it to be faster in certain areas and maintain a better customer experience in the end, hopefully. I think it is a matter of sort of laying out what do you wanna tackle um, and getting some ideas in your head and then thinking a little creatively with the software. There have definitely been some times where we've said, okay, we know how to do this, but what if we didn't care about cost? How would we actually figure out how to model that and do that with the software program? And there's definitely been some little brainstorming sessions of, would this work? Do we think that would work? Let's try it, do a little version of it, uh, and then come back and say, the results did make sense or they didn't make sense. <laughs> if they didn't make sense, asking why and kind of figuring out the process there. Sometimes it's because your inputs weren't sufficient and sometimes it's because you just weren't thinking about it the right way. Um, and once in a while, it's just because you didn't expect the right thing. <laughs> but as you go through kind of just having ideas and not being afraid to try them. Um, but then also, I guess it would be sort of making sure that when you are tackling the projects, you're thinking about the future. So you're not saying, okay, this will actually tell me what I can route today and how I should design my routes today. But you either have some plan of putting in some sort of scenario for a future case, or, and probably both, <laughs> you have the ability to make sure that that model is something you can use again. So you're thinking really carefully about how you set it up and is it the best way and is it something that's repeatable? Because the more repeatable the process is, the more valuable the tool's gonna be. If it's something where it takes you forever every time you wanna start, then it's gonna take you every time you start, just you're sitting down and kind of in a hole of, oh, I have to do this again. Versus if you try to think about how you did it and try to do it so that you can just create new input data, put it in and it'll go through again it makes it a lot easier. At this point, I'd say our biggest challenge is still keeping that customer experience focus. Um, so it is, we've figured out how to tackle cost in a lot of different ways, and we've seen some benefits from that. But still, it remains a challenge to kind of hone in on how you reduce the damage piece and how you use transportation to do that specifically. Because it's kind of counterintuitive. If you think about it, if transportation is causing the damage, then how do you use transportation to lessen the damage? Um, and then definitely sort of the how you get new ideas piece. 
Um, so it is kind of looking through and saying, well, right now, when we design those routes, we're looking at things that are relatively static. We're going to keep reevaluating them, but how can we partner the modeling technology with our own technology and kind of our own systems to see what more dynamic solutions there are? I don't think we're going to get to a place where we can design a route every day that's totally different out of a pool point in California that's going across the country because drivers probably don't like that yet. But it is something where you kind of keep looking at the solutions that come back and your set of constraints today as to why you can't use those solutions and trying to figure out how we might bridge the gap.